This patient was referred to me for endodontic treatment of teeth number 30 and 31. These root canals were done in Ukraine, according to the patient, 10, 15 years ago. So when I saw this patient was in 2020, so four years ago. And as you can see right here, four years ago when he came in for us to redo number 30 and number 31. Again, the root, canal, the root canals were done 10, 15 years prior in Ukraine. Take a look here. A broken lentula here. I don't know what's going on here. Looks like another file there. Tooth number 30. Look at tooth number 31. Previous root canal, overextended, got a percha there. And look at that huge periapicularulucency. This is a J-shaped periapicularulucency, okay? But I want to I want to tell you that not all J-shaped peripheral relucencies vertical root fractures. So there's a way to distinguish these, and you need to pay attention to that. So probings were actually around this tooth were two to four millimeters all around. Tooth number thirty percussion palpation within normal limits. I'll show you a different angulation PA. But look at tooth number thirty one again. Previous root canal huge peripheral relucency here. That's tooth number. 30. Despite all of the, these mishaps done by the dentist who did this root canal, look, no periapical relucencies. Number 30, within normal limits to percussion palpation, probings 2 to 3 millimeters and no periapical relucency. So not every single tooth that you see with a previous root canal that has had mishaps like this will need to be redone. The root canal will need to be redone. In this case, I told the patient, we don't need to redo this root canal. I told the patient there are this root canal was not done properly, but you got lucky. There's no infection, so we'll just monitor this tooth or have your dentist monitor it. Regarding tooth number 31, take a look here again. You can see what's going on with tooth number 31. And I told the patient, you have two options. Either we redo the root canal, guarded prognosis, no promise or guarantees. I'll do my best and see what happens or extract it. And patient said that he wanted to try to save the tooth. So also take a look here. There was a, as you can see, buccal pyrolysis and sinus tract associated with tooth number 31. That's tooth number 30, tooth number 31. Right there, as you can see. Okay. So we went through the crown and redid the root canal for this patient. Redid the root canal for this patient on tooth number 31 in one appointment. Will this root canal fail because... You saw there was a buccal pyrolysis and sinus tract associated with the tooth. Will this root canal retreatment fail because we redid it in one appointment? Take a look here. So this is immediately after we redid the root canal. And let me show you the pre-op again. And in this angulation, again, sometimes you get a J-shaped radiolucency like this. You get a J-shaped radiolucency, but you can distinguish that, as I said, distinguish that from a vertical root fracture, not only by um, probing, um, but also, but all because sometimes, sometimes you can get a deep pocket here, especially if there's a buccal pyrolysis, if there's a pyrolysis and sinus tract associated with it too. Sometimes you, can, you still can get a deep pocket, a single deep pocket. But that's why, again, reading x-rays is important and uh, you need to be able to read x-rays. So take a look here. Take a look here in this angulation. In this angulation, I could tell that there was a missed distal canal. So if there is a missed distal canal, then you can get a lesion like this. If there's a, there's a missed canal, you can get a lesion like that. So not every J-shaped radiolucency, not every one single deep pocket is a vertical root fracture. So Again, you can see in this angulation here, this is this is pre-op, you can see that there was a missed distal canal system. So that would explain this lesion there. All right. 
And you can see there even the furcation involvement. There was also furcation involvement. All of that. So this was endoperio. This wasn't a vertical root fracture. So again, uh, not every J-shaped radiolucency and not every single deep pocket uh, on a tooth is a vertical root fracture. You need to be able to read x-rays and you need to be able to figure out what's going on. Otherwise, you'd be uh, recommending extractions on teeth that can easily be saved. So here, as again, as you can see, there was a missed, missed distal canal system. You can see the large periodicity overextended gutta percha, and uh, as I said, uh, uh, also endo endoperio furcation involvement there. And this was immediately after we did the root canal for this patient. You can see that we were able to locate that missed canal on the distal. We redid this root canal in one appointment. This is another angulation. We redid the root canal in one appointment, and here's the date, as you can see, three years ago, three years, two months, three years, three months ago, three years, three months ago, when we redid this root canal in one appointment, went through the crown and redid the root canal. Okay, will that will, will the root canal fail because I went through a crown and redid the root canal? Will the retreatment fail because I did it in one appointment? Will the root canal retreatment fail because I got sealer extrusion here and here? Again, we redid this root canal for this patient in uh, 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 three years, uh, three years, three months ago, as you can see. All right. So went through the crown, redid the root canal in one appointment, sealer extrusion. Remember, one appointment and sealer extrusion. And going through the crown, all right. And this was today. Three years, three months post up of tooth number thirty-one. Look at tooth number thirty. Still, no periapical lucencies. Three years, three months later. Look at tooth number thirty-one. Remember that large periapical lucency healed completely. Look, remember the furcation. All that furcation bone loss came back. All that bone regrew because it was endoperio. Look at that. Another angulation. Look at this angulation. Perfect. Perfect healing. Perfect healing. So going through the crown to redo the root canal did not cause endodontic failure. Redoing the root canal in one appointment did not cause endodontic retreatment failure. Sealer extrusion did not cause endodontic retreatment failure. And here's the date. As you can see today, just now, three years, three months post op of tooth number 31. Let me put them next to each other. Oh, by the way, let me show you the intro oral so you can see. Remember that buccal, buccal parialis and sinus track? That's the picture from today. Gone. Probings two to three millimeters all around. That's the tooth right there. Remember that buccal parialis and sinus tract gone completely. That's the picture from today. All right, so let's put them next to each other. Three years, three months ago. All right, take a look. Three years, three months ago, pre-op, and today. See that large pair of lucency, J shape. You can see the furcation involvement. And this x ray is from today, three years, three months post op of tooth number 31. Again, I can zoom out so you can see the difference. It was a huge pair of lucency. Healed completely in one appointment. <laughs> 